Sound has accompanied man from the beginning of his existence. It is used for communication, and it helps to avoid danger. It is an element of entertainment and religious ritual. In the beginning, no one wondered what sound was. Nobody built special places to listen to someone's voice or music. There were no architectural acoustics at all. In the early days, architects didn't really pay attention to the propagation of sound. The primary criteria were appearance and ease of use. The shape of the theatres was not based on scientific understanding, but rather by accident. Architecture was at a high level, but still, there was no architectural acoustics at all. As with many other issues, the question of the nature of sound was raised by Greek philosophers. Pythagoras studied the vibrations of strings and pitch. Aristotle described sound as particular movements of air and explored the phenomenon of echo. Yet still, there were no architectural acoustics at all. Several hundred years later, the Roman scholar Vitruvius compared sound to water waves. He explained that sound, like water, is reflected from obstacles, and those reflections make the original sound less clearly audible or defined. Over the following centuries, architecture was becoming more and more sophisticated and complex, but the knowledge of sound was still incomplete. Still, there was no practical connection between acoustics and architecture at all. Significant development of knowledge took place just before and during the Industrial Revolution. Galileo Galilei described the sound frequency. Marseille developed the work of Pythagoras on strings and frequency, and was the first to measure the speed of sound. People knew a lot about sound and about architecture, but nothing about architectural acoustics at all. More and more often, studies were focused on human perception of sound. Helmholtz published Sensations of Tone, a great work on perception of sound and frequency. Lord Rayleigh developed the theory of human sound localization. Christian Andreas Doppler stated that wave frequency depends on the speed of the source relative to that of the receiver, which was confirmed by the experiment conducted by Bui Ballo. The history of architectural acoustics starts for real in the 19th century, when Wallace Clement Sabine, an American physicist, after years of experiments, defined the reverberation time, which is still one of the most important parameters describing the acoustics of a room. This is how it started. Science about sound, about architecture, and about people. Architectural acoustics. The science about achieving good sound in every space, respective to its function. <laughs>